Let's not go to church and sit in pews on Sunday and pretend we've got it all together. The world sees right through it. Basically, I was a normal person. Once you get on Porn Boulevard, the end of Porn Boulevard, you crash and burn. It just kept getting larger and larger and larger. It was an addiction. You have to be smart, guys. You have to understand that if, if you have trouble in a dark room with a computer, you have to be smart enough to fight against that trap to not go into that dark room with that computer. This is the Gettysburg Battlefield, site of one of the most fierce battles of the Civil War. It was here that over 51,000 young men were either killed, wounded, or captured. Men who were filled with great potential and dreams for the future, yet never lived long enough to fulfill those dreams because they became a mortal casualty of the battle fought here. Today, young men are in the midst of a battle, not one of cannons, guns, and quests for territory, but an inward one of sexual integrity that involves a man's very soul. We live in a society that views sex as a recreational sport to be experienced as an entertaining pursuit, void of any real adverse consequences. The advocates of this philosophy say, why not experience it? After all, we were physically made this way. We're just following the course of nature. So today, as never before in history, we see a thriving industry that through various products and means seek to attract the sexual interest of men. It is estimated that the pornography industry is a $13 billion a year business, and that excludes a large number of R-rated films which could be considered soft porn. As you become aware of your sexuality within the present day culture with all of its temptations, you may wonder, is it possible to live a sexually pure life in this time? Can I employ habits, disciplines, or actions which will help me not to yield to sexual temptation? Are there spiritual resources that I can receive that will empower me to remain sexually pure? In this documentary, we will provide answers to those and other questions concerning this vital topic of sexual integrity. The loss of life on this battlefield many years ago was tragic, but the number of young men who fall prey to sexual promiscuity, pornography, and even sexual addiction is much greater. As a young man, you face a battle, but it is a battle that you can win. Some of you may be wondering whether or not it's actually possible for a person to become addicted to pornography since it doesn't seem to be drug related. Truth is, people turn to pornography for the exact same reasons they turn to drugs and alcohol, to find an escape from their problems. And once they discover that the pleasure that they receive from the pornography provides that escape, then it quickly becomes their drug of choice for coping with those problems. Professor Harper, does it have an escalating effect like the drug addictions? It really does, Brad. I've counseled with guys that have suffered some 
great personal losses due to the effects of pornography. They all started out as just casual users, but then they find they're spending more and more time with it and needing more even active personal encounters with it to get the same amount of pleasure that they had received from the lesser exposure in the past. You said they suffer great losses. What were you referring to? I know guys that have lost their jobs due to misusing the internet at work. Some guys have even destroyed their own marriages because of it. You see, the pleasure that we as guys get from pornography, it's all self-centered. So that makes it awfully difficult to develop any kind of a meaningful relationship with a spouse when you're focusing just on yourself. And with the way the world is now, we get it from everywhere. It's hard to fight off. Well, you're stronger if you try not to fight it alone. If you feel the temptation is getting the upper hand, get some support from someone you trust. Someone who can help you refocus from the temptation to the power that will help you overcome it. And I just want all you guys to know, I'm available for you. Anytime you might need me, whether at the college or here at home. Hey, Brad. Thought I saw you come in here. Yeah. I need a couple more sources for that paper I'm doing in history class. Kevin, what are you doing in the library? I thought you were allergic to books. I don't come here for the books, man. I come here for the chicks. See that blonde working the front desk? Ooh, she's so hot, I'm surprised she hasn't set up the sprinkler system by now. I should have known. Anyways, I came by to invite you to my place later tonight. My parents are gone for the weekend, and I got the place all to myself. Weston and Zook are coming over, and Zook, he's bringing some of those new videos. And you know what kind of videos he specializes in. He says these are hotter than ones we saw last month. And one, <laughs> even has that platinum gal you like so very much. Oh yeah, you gotta check out this website. Babes on this. <laughs> They're unreal. Anyway, I gotta go pick up some munchies and uh, special buzz juice if you catch my drift. Right after I pay my respects to the front desk. <laughs> uh, Kevin? Yeah, pal. My pen? Oh, sure. See you tonight. The tree and you're watching every young man's battle well we were writing for this new record and um, of course I'd gotten through reading the book and um, you know it's still really on my heart and on my mind and uh, you know one of the things that I thought man there's just one sin pattern in my life that I just can't get rid of you know there's something that's just constantly hindering me it's just this battle that on that goes on with lust and um, you know every young guy that I've run into you know with our band and with different guys you run into on the road it just seems like it's something that, that the enemy has such a foothold in our lives about, and it just makes you sick, you know. And um, so I, I thought, um, you know, I, I would just try to find some scriptures that really applied to my life. And um, in 2 Corinthians 3, I was reading one day, and um, it talks about how um, our hope and our confidence doesn't come from us alone, it comes from Christ. And I thought, man, that's that's really amazing, you know, that um, to know that this battle isn't in my hands, you know, that this battle is in the Lord's hands. And so, um, you know, ultimately, when you're trying to get rid of something, you'd call it a change. And um, I, I thought, well, maybe I'll just write a song about change. And um, then I thought how Jesus, you know, went through every temptation and, and he overcame them perfect. And I thought, you know, he's a superhero to me, you know. And so I wrote the song, Superhero. And I thought, no, that's kind of cheesy, so I, I made it into change. It's just a, a song about, you know, asking God to come and change us, make us different, you know, and to take away these sin patterns in our life, to get them right, and uh, to make everything um, pure before the Lord. There is a myth believed by many that you can do what you want as a teenager because after you become an adult, it won't matter. 
The person you are as a young man is the person you'll drag into adulthood. Decisions you make today will impact everything in your future. The sexual desires you feed as a teenager will be the same desires you'll want to feed when you're 40. As the old saying goes, you can't sow wild oats and then pray for crop failure. Even the event of marriage won't magically eliminate your desire to yield to sexual temptation. The sex business is thriving and advancements in technology make it easier to access. 60% of all websites are pornographic. There were 27.5 million U.S. visitors to pornographic websites in January of 2002. Americans spent an estimated 220 million at fee-based adult websites. 320 million is projected by the year 2005. Annual rentals and sales of adult video and DVDs top $4 billion, and 11,000 titles are produced every year. This is more than 20 times as many films produced by Hollywood production companies. The internet and cable TV allow for easy and private access to pornography. Internet pornography has become so much more preferred over the print form that one pornographic magazine has seen a drastic reduction in its sales. Well, there's two parts of the culture that I think really affects the way pornography rolls throughout the, the society. I mean, the first part is the secular culture. And we know from looking around, all you have to do is walk out your front door. I mean, you'll see girls running by in bikinis, uh, jogging. You'll see beer commercials. You'll see billboards, uh, R movies. I mean, everywhere you turn, you can draw sensual images uh, right through those eyes and, and, you know, feed that addiction. And then the other aspect is the uh, church culture has not done its job. What has happened, uh, you know, I get a lot of emails from young readers, and what seems to have happened is that pastors have not gotten detailed enough in church to let their kids know, and their parents haven't let them know exactly what sexual sin is. I get a lot of emails from girls and boys who are saying, you know, I always thought that avoiding sexual immorality means to just avoid intercourse, but that everything short of that is okay. Well, actually, of course, the Bible uh, says that you should avoid every hint of sexual immorality. It's a much broader kind of a definition. What I find is that since the church culture has not been doing its job, even the church kids uh, find themselves swimming in the same kind of a problem. It was kind of crazy, but I went up to my closet and looked at some of the things that I was wearing and realized that probably men were, you know, stumbling because of some of the things I was wearing. It started out magazines, then movies, and then um, with sexual partners watching pornography. Um, it just grew into something that I was unable to stop. Once you pick up the pornography, you won't be able to set it down. You won't be able to leave it alone. It's something that it's across the room, you're going to glance at it and keep looking at it, and it just grows. Um, your desire for the pornography increases to a point that it becomes uncontrollable or unstoppable, and the decisions you make once involved with it, I mean, can ultimately change your entire life. You lose your family, you realize how much you hurt, and I used to, I used to hear my mom say, sorry, that how much she hurt inside, and I never realized how much it was until I spent the last year not being able to see her or talk to her, and now that I understand what that pain that I caused her is like to feel, it makes you want to change. More than anything I can think of is you lose someone you love over something you've done. It hurts not only them, but you. And pornography played the major role in losing my family, my friends. Um, there's a lot of people right now I can't even call. They were showing us the phone, and he said you can call family or friends. Right now, I have no friends that I would want to call, and I have no family to call. Well, there were a number of things that 
that uh, got me involved with pornography and sexual sin. And it all started back when I was about six years old and I found a, a stack of Playboy magazines under my dad's bed. And he didn't really know it, but through the years I kept going back. Um, never really got too heavy, uh, even through high school though, because in high school football was my God. I was, uh, was fortunate enough to grow up in a uh, very conservative Christian home. I had uh, two great parents that loved me and took good care of me and they sheltered me uh, a tremendous amount. And I remember as a young boy, I was about 11 or 12, uh, I went out to get the mail one day and, uh, and the mail wasn't there but there was a magazine in the mailbox. I'm a, you know, I'm a 26 year old male and, and just for me pornography has always been, it's always enticed me, it's always, um, but growing up when I did uh, we had to steal it from a liquor store. We had to uh, find it and, and then bury it in the, the garden at one friend's house. And then, you know, hopefully four weeks later, it's still there. And so it was just a, um, it was just a real, real light taste of it. A girl walks by, and good looking girl, maybe a cheerleader or something, and just. Um, I remember looking at my first uh, Playboy magazine when I was in seventh grade and uh, I was ba babysitting a house, house sitting for a friend of mine. And uh, you know, it's your typical teenager, you knew that the husband had a Playboy magazine and uh, um, I found one and I knew if there's one, there's more. And so I literally went through this, this family's house searching for porn. I haven't met a person yet that just has a subscription of Playboy and has been content with that for 20 years. It started as a curiosity and just it kept escalating. I mean, it started uh, started for me probably when I was in fifth grade. At that time, I began to memorize all of the dates uh, when my favorite pornography magazines would come into the drugstore campus, and I would be there at nine o'clock when the doors opened on the days they came in because I wanted to see them right away. You know the new pictures of that month. It just kept getting larger and larger and larger. It was an addiction. Guys are always interested in girls and we start off as a young age. Let's get real. You know let's talk about uh, the dirty little secret. Um, you know people say what's that and uh, pornography it's just that. It's, it's, it's a secret that most guys, most pastors, most people in the church, most people out of the church is the one thing that that were, were drawn into. I also started to chase women and uh, just really got heavily into that. One year after college, for instance, I, I had four girlfriends at one time. I was sleeping with three of them and I had uh, was essentially engaged to be married to two of them. For me, I was uh, spending probably around fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars a month uh, on phone sex lines. There's always a lot of girls that were interested in me and it just kind of took me down quick. The answer is being honest. Let's not go to church and sit in pews on Sunday and pretend we've got it all together. The world sees right through it. They say we're fake. They say we're hypocrites. They say, and, and a lot of times they have good reason to say these things. I thought the book did an awesome job of giving a clear-cut definition of sexual immorality. It's not just not having sex. It's What really hit me was that it is being fulfilled sexually in any way by another person or another thing other than your spouse. There's a lot of people that are hurting and they're sitting in our church pews every Sunday morning. We're dealing with this issue and we're just pretending like it's not there. And we've got to start speaking out. We've got to start saying the truth. Otherwise, um, we lose our credibility in, in dealing with social issues. You know, let's get real. If, if you did a pornography addiction weekend at a church, nobody would come. Someone addicted to alcohol or drugs soon reveals the problem through physical signs. Not so with pornography or sexual addiction. A person hooked on pornography or sex suffers from the secret addiction. The temptation is strong and the battle is real. And this battle exists because what God wants for your sexual life is contrary to what is tolerated and even promoted by our society and culture. You were destined for this battle the day you were born and the nurse wrapped a light blue blanket around you and declared you a boy. God has a standard for sex. 
If there is a single Bible verse that captures God's standard for sexual purity, it is Ephesians 5, 3. But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity. In his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has committed adultery with her in his heart. The Bible says the body is not meant for sexual immorality. It also says flee from sexual immorality. The Apostle Paul writes, it is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control his own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in a passionate lust like the heathen. God made you a sexual being and designed you to experience the full joy of sex within marriage. Given the times we live in, the persistent temptations of sex outside of God's will, and the easy access to sexual impurity, the battle is formable. In this battle, you need to be determined to be a victor and not a casualty. As rough as the battle can seem to be, you are not powerless in the face of this enemy. There is a winning strategy which you can put into action. We talk about something called starving the sumo, and what it has to do with is our sex drive. Um, our sex drive is something that's innate in us, that you know God has created in us. And a lot of times, uh, young men will say, oh, you know, I have a sex drive that's stronger than what most rabbits have. You know, how am I supposed to control these urges in me? What I found is that a lot of times, your true sex drive is much less than what you think. And it's really through watching the R-rated movies, looking at the computer screen, that we actually see the central images and begin to really puff up our sex drive. We sumo-size it. You know, you've seen sumo wrestlers on TV, and you know they don't get that way just by walking down the street. I mean, they gotta be eating and filling themselves up with all kinds of food to get up to that size. And what we're saying is that you know, there's, there's two components to your sex drive. There's the natural component, and then there's the part that you've blown up with all the things you've been looking at. And when we say starve the sumo, what we're saying is we need to begin to cut off those images that are feeding him and making him grow out of control. Because while he's still that sumo size, you say to yourself, I want to win, I want to win, but he can just knock you out of the ring anytime he wants because your sex drive can be so strong. And what we're saying is if you put the defenses in place and begin to starve him, he gets kind of skinny again, back to where he needs to be, where it can really be controlled through the natural processes that God has built into our lives. Every weekend in the fall, Americans turn their attention to the 100-yard war. Two football teams do battle at countless locations across the country. Each team has the goal of winning, but winning does not come just because it's a goal or a hope for result. It most often occurs when a team executes its plays and strategy better than the opponent. Coaches stress the importance of a strong defense to keep the opposition from scoring. Defensive players are trained to react quickly and move fast to make the play. Hesitation results in failure, and failure results in defeat. In battling sexual sin, you must develop a good defense. The first place to start is with the eyes. Over time, I began to understand how this concept of the covenant of the eyes becomes a defense uh, for us. Essentially, what the covenant of the eyes is, is a way to block that broken sewage pipe from spewing all the sewage into your mind. Um, the idea behind it is to take all these sexual images that are all around us, block them so that it doesn't get into your eyes and create that lust and create that sin as we lust. And as I began to make rules like this in each area of my life, I began to cut off those images and I began to breathe for the first time and there was some hope I'd be out of the prison. We want to talk to you a little bit as we draw up some plays on, on the chalkboard today about some things that you are going to face maybe when you go out there. We're going to take a football analogy, but we're going to, we're going to apply it to the game of life. We want to talk a little bit today about, the, first of all, about the trap play. And a lot of times we call this the sucker play. And the reason it's a sucker is because you get drawn in it 
uh, do not be ignorant of Satan's devices. You get drawn in unawares. It happens to you, and you don't even know it, it's happening to you. And when a sucker is not a guy that, that trips and falls down. A sucker is a guy who trips and falls down and continues to trip and fall down at the same place every day. He hasn't figured out a way to get around it. That's one of the things we hope that we're going to be able to show you today. So we're going to, we're going to, one of the plays that we're going to be running out there is what we're going to call the, uh, the we're going to call 22 trap. And it's, it's set up like this. This is the offense. We're going to start out with a good double team right here, the center and the guard. This is the guy that we want all the, all the people watching to, to keep their eye on. This guy all game long has been getting beat up by this guy. And now on the sucker play, on the trap play, he's all of a sudden not going to block him, but is going to slip down inside. Now this guy, thinking that he's finally beat his man after all, all game of practice, all game of working, is going to come across the line. And when he comes across the line, we're going to pull the guard from the back side, and he's going to come along and blast that guy and uh, clear a hole for the running back to be able to run through. So that's a trap play, and we'll take a look at that here on the video. Take a look at number 71. All game long, he's been blocked by the guy over the top of him. And here on this one play, all of a sudden, nobody blocks him. Look what he does. He runs across the line, and he gets smashed by this guy coming and attacking him that he didn't, didn't know was attacking him. Here's the lesson to be learned in that. Sometimes if it's too easy, it's too easy. Your antenna ought to go up. What's going wrong that this guy hasn't blocked me? It's the same as, as life. You have to be smart, guys. You have to understand that if, if you have trouble in a dark room with a computer, you have to be smart enough to fight against that trap to not go into that dark room with that computer. You have to be smart enough to know that if you turn on the movie channel that there are going to be things on there that you don't want to see. You have to play defense and be smart enough not to turn on that television. And in order for you to be successful, you have to look at how you've been trapped in the past. Where, what has caused you to step into that trap and get blasted, blindsided by the, by the oncoming uh, offensive lineman? What is it that made you do that and become wise and learn not to make that same mistake again? The Bible tells us that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. God gave you a brain. Use your brain. So now let's take a look at this, this same guy who's been trapped a couple of times. Now all of a sudden he begins to wise up a little bit. He said, the last time this guy didn't block me, they trapped me. I will not step into that trap again. I'll not make that same mistake again. In fact, when the man over the top of him pulls and goes down inside, you can see what does he do? He closes right down the line of scrimmage. He closes down the area where which the enemy might be able to attack, makes it a smaller area. He does a great job of playing defense against the attacks of the enemy. And the truth is, in your life, there are going to be times when you are alone, you are uh, you're by yourself, and the enemy attacks. There's nobody to help you. What are your defenses? How do you stand? You go back to the fundamentals. You put on the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, gird your loins with truth, shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel, peace, carry the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, and having done all to stand. But you've got to do all first. You've got to close down and, and resist the devil the way that you've been taught to do it and not step into that trap. And I need you to change, man. Hi, I'm Glenn. And I'm Jeremy. And we're with the band down here, and you're watching Every Young Man's Battle. When it comes to devotions and spending time with God and keeping your defense up as, uh, as far as your sexual purity goes, devotions is number one on the list um, for me. And I know